Now, welcome to a very rare haul video here on my channel. I've had a little influx of goodies recently, both from Kickstarter rewards coming in and some art that I have treated myself to. And since it is my birthday in a little less than a week, I thought it would be a good time to do a little show and tell video and share some of the rad art goodies I've gotten, along with some supplies I've gotten that I was gonna test and swatch as well. I will have all of the artists that I share in this video listed in the description below as well as on screen while I talk about them, so make sure to give them all a follow and check out their socials and support indie artists. The first art I have to share is from the artist Davi Ann, and she goes by Sunflower Fairy on Instagram but has a different TikTok handle and that's where I actually found her, so I'll have that on the screen. She creates beautiful cottagecore cozy art that I absolutely love and I just had to get myself some prints and stickers. So first up we have this print, which is actually her thank you cards, which are beautiful. I love it. Then I have this little fall print. It's so vibrant. I just love it with the little cottage and the ducks. And this actually has a matching sticker that came with it as well. Then we have this print that is going right in my front entryway of this like misty woodsy forest scene path that I absolutely love. I just love the ambiance it gives off. And then four total stickers, this beautifully vibrant holographic uh, mushroom and bunny sticker, very spring, a sunflower that is beautifully done, the fall duck sticker that matches the print, and this one that is my most favorite, which is this beautiful studio desk scene that looks out into the wilderness. I absolutely love it. Make sure you check out her work. Next, we have this beautiful Amanita mushroom print. This is from the artist The Nevermore Nest. And this was actually a Patreon reward because I support them on Patreon, but I am pretty sure she may have some of these left in their shop that I'll list below. So check out if you're looking to get a hold of one. This is also gonna go in my front entryway. I have two original paintings from Nevermore Nest of some beautiful moths in my front entryway already above my wall sconces and they are some of my favorite pieces. They have beautiful gold detailing that looks so stunning when the sun shines in. I just can't get enough of them. Next is a Legend of Zelda themed zine called Seal the Darkness. This was a charity zine with all proceeds being donated to the Rainforest Trust. And this was a pre-ordered item. Currently, I'm not sure if they're selling any extra stock copies, but I will list the Twitter account for the zine as well as all of the artists who contributed art in the description box. So we'll go through the goodies first before we get to the actual zine. It came with this awesome Master Sword bookmark. I love that this has two different sides. So you have the fresh side with the sunlight when it's freshly placed in the ground, and then the back side is once it is old and decayed. So fantastic, absolutely love it. Then we have this awesome print of Link with some serious guardian trouble. <laughs> Next we have, I think this is probably my favorite bonus that came with it, a print of Fee or Fi. I'm not sure how people choose to say that with the Master Sword uh, from Skyward Sword. Fun fact, Skyward Sword, not actually one of my favorite Zelda games, but I do love this art. The cutest little Korok sticker sheet ever. I don't know where I'm gonna put these, but I have got to put them somewhere. I love that they have the target balloon. That's so cute. Some weapon stickers of various weapons. I love the Kokiri sword with all the naturey patterns and leaves. Definitely my favorite. And then of course the zine itself, which has the most beautiful silver foil title on the front. I love it. This is also a wraparound image that completes on the back. Pretty great. And the zine itself is filled with original stories and art from all different artists. Obviously I'm not going to flip through the whole thing for you, but I'm not actually sure that this is available still to purchase uh, the zine itself because it was a charity zine that was like a pre-order deal, but I will link everything below that I know about it and the artists, of course, so make sure you check them out. There are some such great stuff in here and uh, awesome artists to support. 
And the last art I have to share with you that I have recently gotten was a Kickstarter that I actually forgot about. I tend to do this. I back Kickstarters and then kind of don't follow along with them because I just hope that they're successful and I get the thing. Typically I back Kickstarters for art projects. This was an art book and when it showed up in the mail I had completely forgotten that this was something I was getting and I am so excited for it. It is a beast of an art book. It is the art of Stefan Coidel. He is a horror artist and sculptor and does absolutely amazing work. Some of my most favorite horror art of recent note. This book is gigantic. My favorite feature right here are these beautiful matte black edges uh, that I just, I love it so much. So in addition to the book, it also came with this massive packet of bonuses and uh, stretch goal rewards and things. So we'll go through this first and then I'll give you a quick couple peeks at the book itself. All right, we'll start with the small and work our way up to the big. So it came with three bookmarks, which are beautiful i think i love this one the most this like subtle red glow on the back Ugh, i just love his work so much and then this one matches the uh, cover art of the book as you can see then we got these four gigantic stickers these have to be at least like four or five inch diameter stickers and they are beautiful and creepy as most of his work is I uh, love it. Oh, this one's really, really, really great. I don't know where I'm gonna put these, but I will find room. Next, we have some prints, which I have absolutely no room on my walls for, but am I gonna make room? I absolutely am. There is this one. I think one of my favorite things for the most part about many of his pieces that are definitely in the book are these kind of relatively mundane scenes that just have an extremely creepy element. For instance, I mean, this is just a kitchen. It's just a kitchen, you know, with monsters. I love that. I think this is probably my most favorite piece for the lighting and color palette. It's so limited, but so effective, and it is just absolutely stunning. This is my favorite one for subject matter. I just love the contrast of this super horror monster with this beautiful innocent child just offering it a flower. Very kind of uh, Frankenstein in that way love it and then this one which has such a great atmosphere of the very in focus mob with this huge looming creature in the background fantastic and then this one which really shows kind of a depth of landscape and setting a tone love it and the last one is so big i can't actually show it in this setup but i will show the whole thing it is a fold out poster so here is the fold out poster. I absolutely love the imagery here. Again, it's kind of, I love the simple sort of mundane concept, man in a boat, very classic with, you know, a dragon skeleton underneath, just that little hint of different. My only complaint that has nothing to do with the art is I am so sad that this was folded because these creases are pretty much never gonna be gone. So if I ever wanted to frame this and hang this, which I would love to, it is always gonna be creased. So that is unfortunate, but the piece is still beautiful. Happy to have it. And now we have the book, which is beautiful. It has a matte cover. And like I mentioned, the stunning matte black page edging, which really just makes my heart so happy. Um, it's also truly a huge book. Cover to cover, it's 318 pages, which for an art book is amazing. And some pages have art like this, and then there are tons of pages too that just have a single piece with, um, you know, text talking about the piece itself. It's not so much talking about the process of the piece, but a little like side story that goes with them, which I think is really, really cool. I just feel like it adds such an experience to reading through the book. I mean, obviously learning about an artist's process is amazing as well, but this is such a different uh, presentation. And then at the end, there is a little about his uh, sculpture work of mask making and things like that, which are, as you can see, utterly incredible. And it's just, it's a stunning book. It's one I'm so glad to have in my collection. I am not positive because this was a Kickstarter if this is available to purchase just in his shop or anything, but I will link everything I have below and I hope you can get a hold of one too.
And now onto the new supplies that I have gotten. The first is kind of boring. It was just a standard restock of my favorite paper, some Strathmore Mixed Media Paper 400 series. I talk about this paper in depth in my What Paper Should You Use With Copic Markers video as part of my Copic series. I will link that above for you. But yeah, this is my most favorite paper. I use it for pretty much all my finished traditional pieces. Highly recommend. Next is a simple supply, but it's one I haven't tried before, and that is a new white gel pen. This is the Uniball Signo white gel pen, which I have heard very good things about, but I have never tried myself. I wanted to get it and see how it worked in comparison to the Sakura Jelly Roll pens, which is what I typically use for an opaque white gel pen, and I'm excited to try it out and see how it works. Next is this Tombow uh, calligraphy set. Now I didn't actually get these for the purposes of calligraphy. I got this to use as some line work pens. I kind of wanted to be expanding in my pen collection a little bit. These were not actually the pens I was hoping to get, but it was what they had and it had a few in there that I wanted to try. So I just got the set. It also came with an eraser, which is fun because you just can't ever have too many of those. But I wanted to try out the pens of different types and see about adding more to my repertoire. Right now I kind of only use the Sakura Micron pens as well as a pencil brush pen for any kind of line work and inking and I just wanted to try out some new things and see what I thought. And the last thing that I treated myself to in my haul are some new Ecoline inks, actually quite a few of them. I treated myself to six new bottles of these, they were on sale and I took full advantage. I first used Inkaline inks in my Sailor Moon redesign project. The video for that is coming soon. I'm just waiting for prints to arrive. <laughs> and I fell in love with them. They're so vibrant and they're so beautiful. Now these are a watercolor ink. These are a very concentrated watercolor ink. So they will reactivate unlike the acrylic inks but the colors are so beautiful. And since I tend to work in a mixed media variety of many different inks, including Copics and then line work and things like that. I wanted to expand my ink collection. So I'm going to swatch those and show you just how lovely they are and the new colors that I have in my ink collection now. watch these inks I'm using a wet on wet technique where I bleed the ink in it's the same way I would use them in a finished piece and I wanted to see the colors and how they would dry down in that kind of technique Quick commentary on this fur green color. So this is a bit of a teal. It's definitely more green than blue, but teals in general on camera really, really, really struggle. Typically it's either gonna look very green or very blue. And in this case, it looks super blue on film, but I promise you in real life, it is so much more green. So this one's a little deceptive. It is not this blue in real life. Later on in the video, once it's dried down some, it really does start to look a bit more true to color. So just keep an eye out later once you see it dry and the green really shows up a lot better through the camera. Next color, the 508 Prussian Blue. For some reason, the bottle is covered in ink. I have no idea why. It's not cracked. There's no leaks. It wasn't opened. I truly can't 
explain why it's so covered in ink. I did end up cleaning it off once I realized it was going to start reactivating the second it got any kind of damp on it and I got ink all over my fingers, but yeah, that was a weird one. Either way, the ink's just fine. I was a little nervous when I first laid this one down because as you can see, it looks quite similar to the Deep Ultramarine that I had previously swatched and I was worried they were gonna be the same, but once they dry down, they do look quite distinct and it takes on the beautiful, deep, rich Prussian blue tone that is one of my most favorite colors. I am extremely impressed with this pastel violet. I really wasn't sure just how pastel it would actually be, and it is great. While the ink swatches dry down, I also decided to add in some metallic watercolor and Copic swatches to this sheet and then use it to test my new white gel pen to see how it works over the top of different media. So I swatched some of those down. These paints are from Dreamland Watercolor. I will link the video above where I first swatched and reviewed those because I adore them. Also, quick break for the best part about working with metallic watercolors. Okay, so in addition to the Ecoline inks that I got, I also swatched some metallic watercolors um, to test the gel pen over and some Copics as well and just a little rainbow of colors. So I figure we'll go through and do the old one first. This is the Sakura Jelly Roll white gel pen. This is what I usually use when I'm adding white gel pen on things. I'm actually going to start with these first because the eco lines are not waterproof. So sometimes when you go over them with white gel pen, I have found that they tend to kind of mix a little bit and then you need to just clean the tip of the pen off. So I figure we'll start with these first, which should go over pretty clean. So I figure we'll do like a little circle and then a line and maybe a little dash line. So I've always enjoyed these Sakura Jelly Roll pens. I feel like they are a little hit or miss for some people. Some people have tried them and absolutely hate them. I have found the trick to them is using an extremely light hand. Like the harder you push, the worse it's going to be. You really kind of just want to glide it right over the top of the paper because if you push down, you end up just carving the ink away from itself, if that makes sense. You kind of need it to just flow out of the tip, but that's pretty good. It's decently opaque. It doesn't pick up any of the other color. I find on reds, let's see if you can tell once it's closer. I do find on reds of any type, the Sakura Jelly Rolls do seem to kind of pick up the color, which is a little confusing. I don't understand why that would be the case, but every time, no matter what medium, that seems to happen. So when we try and use it over the watercolors here, it's a little bit of a rough start, but it does end up working, although it's a little bit more broken up than it is over something like the Copics. And I think that's likely just because the watercolors, especially these metallic ones, they do have a texture to them. And I think the jelly roll struggles a bit over that, but it does work. I don't really know how well this will show up over the gold, but we'll try it out. Not bad, a little rough on the gold. It doesn't really want to lay down that well. And now we will try it over the eco lines and see what these look like. That one worked quite well. It doesn't seem to be picking up, which is what happened the last time I tried to use these. Okay, but this one definitely does. So you can see that that pretty much just now turns like a shade of blue as opposed to staying white. And I'm guessing that is because the eco lines are not at all waterproof. 
Well, it happened less here, but definitely still is happening. It's interesting that different inks seem to have this problem more than others. But it does go on very smoothly over them. Ooh, this one is really bad for taking on that color. Hmm. And unsurprisingly so is the red. A little rough. So overall works pretty great over the Copics. Over the watercolors is kind of iffy. Now I truly think with the eco lines the different pen is not going to make too much of a difference. The Uniball Signo which is the new gel pen that I picked up. I don't think it's gonna matter because I think it is an ink thing under here not a pen problem. Also, by the way, I wanted these to dry very um, textured like this and very with like kind of the natural bleed lines because that's how I typically use inks. I love this natural texture it gives. I don't do a lot of making it like super smooth and super blended with perfect gradients or anything. So I wanted to make sure the water dried down with some texture in there as well. This is also a bit of a fatter tip than the... Um, Sakura Micron is not by much, but I do think it is a bit of a wider. So let's see how this one works. Okay, right off the bat, much smoother. Like much smoother than the Sakura Jelly Roll. Wow. None of the issues of really needing to uh, have a perfect like placement method to get it to flow out nicely. It flows super duper smoothly. Oh, that's beautiful. I also feel like it doesn't pick up the red as much as the Sakura did. All right, over the top. Oh my gosh, so much better. I see why everyone loves this pen. <laughs> this is beautiful. It's also much more opaque than the Sakura Jelly Rolls are. Like, look at that. Stunning. All right, let's finish off our swatches and then I'll do a close-up of everything. Okay, with that finished, I can, without even getting into detail, this is better. This is better. This is better. The Uniball Signo white gel pen, absolutely better than the Sakura Jelly Roll pen. I do believe this is a little bit more expensive than these are individually, but not by much. I think this was like a little under $2 or maybe a little over $2. I can't remember. I'll put it on the screen, but this was not unaffordable and definitely worth it. So let's compare now some details. So on the Copics, I think overall it's pretty close in terms of opaqueness, but this goes on so much smoother. The opacity pretty similar. I do think once this dried down, it did pick up a little of the red and it's hard to see on camera, but I do think this one is more white than this one, which is a little bit more pink. Editing K jumping in here because something strange kind of occurred hours after the new Uniball pen had dried down. If you look now, you can see that some of the opacity has like disappeared. So this right side is the Uniball side and like this is now purple tinted, this is very blue, this is green. Across the board, the opacity has like disappeared. It's so strange. So now I'm a little torn because it goes on much smoother, but I mean, especially over a dark color like this, the Sakura Jelly Roll way better. So that's a little concerning and definitely wanted to make sure that I mention it to you. Over the watercolor, uh, the metallic watercolor, there's literally no question. The Pentel is phenomenally better. It went on smooth. It is opaque. There's no contest here. Over the Ecoline watercolor inks, I actually think the Pentel still drastically performed better in terms of that color pickup, which truly surprises me because I thought it was going to be the ink issue underneath, not the pen itself. But if you compare this line, which is the Pentel, with any of these lines that is the Sakura, and same with, you know, this circle over this circle, one is clearly much more opaque. I put some extras on, by the way, over where it was darker, just to make sure we were getting the same amount of ink underneath. 
And it's the same across the board. The Sakura are all very, they blend with the color. They just don't stay opaquely white compared to the Pentel, especially on things like these and on the red, the Prussian blue up here. Definitely, definitely, immediately will recommend the Uniball Signo pen. This is great. I will be using this from now on and I'm definitely gonna need to get some more. And that is everything I have to share with you today. Thank you so much for watching. Quick note before we go, next week on Saturday, which is my birthday, my spring collection is going to be launching in my shop. I'll have a new line of prints and stickers as well as a few products that you can order too. And next week's video is going to be the behind the scenes process and kind of making of the entire spring collection. I have shared a few sneak peeks in previous videos, but the whole collection will be up on Saturday the 23rd for you to purchase if you wish. And so I hope you enjoy that. Thank you again for watching. Take care, my friends. Be well. Until next time.